Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. So today I have this black t-shirt that I got secondhand and I really like everything about it. It's in really good shape, like the black is still black. I like the fit, I like the sleeves. The only thing I do not like is this neckline. It's just like, who can breathe in a neckline like this? And I just don't think it's very pretty to have a neckline like right there. So I've got my trusty piece of marking wax and I'm just gonna put a line where I want that neckline to come to. Once I drop the neckline, I'm gonna be a lot more comfortable, but it's still gonna be quite plain and I just don't really need another plain black shirt. So I'm gonna take it into work where I have a beautiful embroidery machine and after school, I'm going to embroider a design on the front. I'll drop the neckline once I get back home. I don't need it to be this long either, so I'm gonna take a strip off the bottom so that I have a nice neckband and I think that'll be just great. So I'm glad to have you along for the ride. Let's get this done. This is a Janome Memory Craft 9900. It's a beautiful machine. It's a few years old now, but it has lots of different designs on it. Because my t-shirt is a knit, I'm gonna be using a ballpoint or jersey needle. Um, if you use a regular universal needle, it just pokes so many holes in the knit fabric that it will unravel. For a knit fabric, you want ballpoint jersey. And the thread I'm using is Mettler Poly Sheen. This is a beautiful embroidery thread. Okay, so I've got the shirt inside out here. I've transferred my markings to the inside as well. There's the marking where I want the neckline to come down to. And then this mark is where I want the design to center. So this tearaway stabilizer is, it's really important to use a stabilizer when you're embroidering on a knit because otherwise it's just gonna stretch and pull and um, really make a mess. This stuff works pretty well. Temporary adhesive for fabric. It's gonna give that stabilizer a quick spray. Flip it over. And now I'll flip the shirt right side out again. Good, and now I've got my big hoop here and I'm gonna put this inside the shirt. So the hoop is inside there now and the, uh, the top part of the hoop, I wanna get my dot from the center into the center of these cross lines. Tightening up that hoop. I have to get all the rest of the shirt out of the way. So it's all gonna come to the front. So the shirt is all piled up around and only that one layer of the front is going to be exposed there. So just getting the hoop into the machine is a little challenging when you've got so much fabric piled up around, but you can nudge your presser foot up an extra level. On this machine, there are lots of different designs but the one I'm gonna to do today is one of the monochrome designs. It's this one. It's like a big bee or fly. So with the shirt all out around the hoop as much as I can, nothing bunched underneath, then I'm just gonna go. This design takes 41 minutes to embroider, but here it is as it was progressing. There it is all finished. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that design. Good, and then when it's all done, that stabilizer just pulls right away. I'm gonna take the t-shirt back home, cut down the neck, and show you the finished product. Good, so now that that's done, I've remarked where I want the neckline to drop to, and I think I'll just draw in half of the line. But I only have to draw half. I don't have to draw all the way around and try to make it symmetrical. I can just fold it in half to make sure it's symmetrical. So luckily this t-shirt is sort of extra long so I can take off two inches off the bottom. If I make my own neckband out of that bottom edge it'll just be perfect. I'm going to be cutting off the hem and then cut a two inch strip from just above the hem. So this is what I'll use for the neckband. This method is only going to work if you're okay with losing four inches off the length of your t-shirt because we're cutting off the hem, so there we're losing one inch, and then the two inch strip that we'll use for the neckband, 
and then we'll be folding up a new hem on the t-shirt so there's another inch so that's four inches total that we'll be losing off the length so if you're okay with that then you're golden if you don't want to lose four inches off it then your best bet it would be to use the hem as your neckband and it does work okay it just it doesn't give you quite as refined a finish so to cut the neckline now because it's a symmetrical garment I'm gonna fold it in half bring the two shoulder seams together I need to make sure that I end up with a right angle at the front and a right angle at the back otherwise I'll have a V or a point now you can just rough that in or if you want you could use a curved ruler too and you can use scissors or a rotary cutter I'm happy with that neckline so putting it back in half now I just want to get a measurement this band that, that I'm going to be using has already two seams at the two side seams sometimes t-shirts are knit on a tube you might get lucky and have no seams at all so because I know I'm gonna need two seams on this band I think I'll do both sections each one 75% the back neck is measuring out of six inches on the fold so that means I want my back neck piece to be six plus three. So the half measurement plus half again. So I want the back piece to be nine. When I'm playing around with this band, I'm trying not to stretch it too much because as you stretch knit, it's going to roll and become more and more difficult to work with. But I think I'm already at that point. So I'm gonna cut this nine plus just a little bit of seam allowance. So I'll cut nine and a half. And then the front neck is eight. So I want to cut it eight plus half again is 12. Plus a bit of seam out, so 12 and a half. So I'll put these two bits of the neck band right sides together and it's curled toward the right side. If you can't tell which is right side, basically you're, you're unrolling that curl and the curled up edge is the right side. I'll put a ballpoint needle in this machine as well. I'll just join these two ends with just a small seam allowance, about a quarter inch edge of my presser foot. Okay, and here at the iron, I'm just gonna be pressing the two seams open and flat. Then I can fold my band in half and press again. And as I go around, I'm trying my best to get the edges not just uncurled, but even with each other. So here's my band now, and now I'm going to quarter mark it. So I'm bringing the two seams together and I'll put a pin at, this is the longer section, so that's the center front and the center back. And now on my shirt with the shoulder seams together, I will put a pin at the center front and the center back. The band is now going to go to the shirt right side together matching up the shoulder seams. So making sure I've got the front going toward the front and the back going toward the back. I'm going to put a pin at the shoulder seams, center back of the neckband to the center back of the shirt. And so you can see you have to stretch the neckband just that little bit, but it's important that you do have to stretch. If it just fits together neatly, it's not going to lay right when it's sitting on the body. Where that stretch is really important is especially in the front. If the neckband doesn't have to stretch, it's not going to lay flat. It's going to stand up along the neckline and that does not look good. I'm going to be taking this straight to the serger and I'm going to serge the band on. If you don't have a serger, no problem at all. What I would recommend is you're going to be sewing with your ballpoint or jersey needle, sew at the edge of your presser foot, and then zigzag your edge. But on the serger, I'm gonna do it all in one step. Good, so for serging this neckband on, I'm going to start somewhere in the back section. As I go, I wanna stretch and make sure my edges are coming together here. Just be careful whenever you're sewing with pins at the serger. You have to unroll and stretch and bring edges together. It's a little bit fussy. Try your best to sew this section nice and straight. And while I'm here, I'm just going to run around that bottom edge. That looks great. I'm going to just press it now with the seam allowance going toward the body. 
Now you could call this done and you know if you if that's as far as you want to take this you can just wear this as is. Maybe do the hem but the neckline a lot of t-shirts are just like that but I do prefer it if it gets a nice little top stitch around the outside edge. If you are done and that's as far as you're going to watch the video don't forget to click subscribe before you go but stick around if you want to see how this t-shirt turned out for me. So while I'm here at the iron, I'm just turning up two centimeters or three quarters of an inch, and I'm gonna press that flat. So on your hem, you can do a zigzag if you're worried that by stretching the t-shirt, you'll break the thread, and that's 100% fine. For this t-shirt though, I'm gonna prefer the look of a straight stitch. So I am gonna just give a gentle stretch while I sew it, and that's going to be fine. All right, so the hem is done. And now once around this outside edge, I'm going to start somewhere in the back, nice and close to that seam. So I don't have to worry about the thread breaking. I'm just going to stretch a little bit as I go. And back to the iron for a final press. So here you'll see how important that final press is. See how it looks okay, but quite like wiggly and lumpy. The final press is just going to take care of that. And then the same thing on the bottom hem. It's not going to look great until you give it that final press. Nice. Okay, I'm going to show you how this turned out. Okay, I'm all done. And the neckline is so much nicer, isn't it? Like, it's a lot more comfortable and it's just prettier. And the length is fine. It kind of just hits right below my waistband. I could still tuck it in if I want to. I think I'll just enjoy wearing this t-shirt a lot more now. I'll feel it. it's a little bit more special because of the extra work that I did on it. Yeah, I was hoping it would look good with this jacket. Yep, that's going to work out great for me. I really like this. So I'm so glad that you stuck around and watched till the end. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. It means a lot. And so until next time, you take care.